Shri Shri Radha Mahamahotsava Ki Or Premanandi Radharani's appearance day. Since Sunday, I've been it's been Radharani and Radharani and Radharani and can't get enough of Radharani. Tomorrow morning too, because tomorrow morning is evening in China, and tomorrow is Radharani's appearance day in China. So tomorrow morning is the, their evening. Radharani's Appearance Day discussion. When you think of Radharani in two or three words, what do you think of? We'll start over here. When you think of Radharani, what do you think of? Mercy. Short, short. No, 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 you can say something else, but keep the phrase short, not a long. Okay. When you think of Radharani, what do you think of? She's always forgiving. Very nice. She's what? Beautiful. And merciful. And 
thing is that it's important. If anyone who could control Krishna is Srimati Radha Rani. They go well together, right? Motherly love and controlling Krishna. <laughs> yeah. Mercy. Mercy. Okay. Well, there she is. Srimati Radharani. Definitely very beautiful and golden in complexion. Because of the question last night um, about the eight principal gopis of Krishna and someone wanted to know more about them, I spent hours today gathering information on the eight principal gopis. The PDF is being sent out with that, that description. The primary description comes from Rupa Goswami's Radha Krishna Gondadesh Deepika. And it gives their age, when they were born, and they don't age beyond a certain age. They, their age stops generally around 14, 14 and a half for the whole Leela. They have their small child pastime, but they don't age beyond 14, 14 and a half. So think of some girls you know that are 14, 14 and a half, and what's that like? And they're, they're totally absorbed in Radha, and their personalities are so different. But they're all embodiments of some portion of her to total character and quality absorbed in love for Krishna. So we'll carry on. This is a very beautiful photograph of Radha Madhava in Mayapur. We can't think of Radha separate from Krishna. So Radha Madhava or Radha Shamasundar or Radha Govinda or Radha Damodar or Radha and her merciful counterpart, Krishna. When we um, hear by Radha's mercy, we can get the opportunity to engage in devotional service. The goal of that devotional service is described as a loving service to Krishna, Krishna Prema. And you read very carefully and you'll find in Chaitanya Charitamrita and other places that prema has its degrees also. There's perfect and then there's Sanskrit terms that describe further and further stages of prema. And the ta that topmost stage of prema, only Radha can manifest. It's called Mahabhava. And one of the principal examples pointed to of Radha's Mahabhava is this painting here. Um, you see up by that pink flower, there's a bumblebee. And 
the bumblebee is who Radha is speaking to. You see in the background, that's Uddhava. Uddhava looks very much like Krishna. Uddhava is Krishna's dear friend and intimate companion. Very special person, Uddhava. He even looks like Krishna. Complexion-wise, and when he dresses like Krishna, everyone thinks it's Krishna, but it's, it's Uddhava. And he's bringing a letter from Krishna to the gopis, which he's reading, but Radharani doesn't want to hear the letter. Instead, she talks to the bumblebee in, in this Mahabhava state of madness. And I'm going to read parts of it. It's, it's directly from Srimad Bhagavatam. It's an exhibition of her ecstatic love. And in her ecstatic love, she's in this group. She's the leader of a group that we know as left-wing gopis, Vama. Contrary. And, but with love, not the other way. Some people are contrary with another mood. But with intense love for Krishna. And her intense love for Krishna sometimes moves in a funny way. Even she doesn't understand it. it. But it just controls her. Her love controls her. And she speaks things that are very surprising to come from a, from Radharani, <laughs> the best of, the dear most to Krishna. I'm good, just going to read, and as we'll go forward, we'll watch the bee move around. Whoops. Because she's talking to the bee. Okay, so, my dear bumblebee, you are accustomed to drinking honey from flower to flower, and therefore you have preferred to be a messenger of Krishna who is of the same nature as you. You have come here carrying a message for me, anxious to touch my feet, but my dear bumblebee, let me warn you, don't touch me. I don't want any messages from your unreliable master. You're an unreliable servant of an unreliable master. Now she's talking to Uddhava by talking to the bumblebee. messenger from Krishna. Your master Krishna is exactly of your quality. You sit down on a flower and after tasting a little honey, you immediately fly away and sit on another flower and taste. Similarly, only once did your master Krishna give me the chance to taste the touch of his lips and then he left me altogether. I know also that the goddess of fortune Lakshmi, who is always in the midst of the lotus flower, is constantly engaged in Krishna's service. But I do not know how she has become so captivated by Krishna and why she is so much attracted to Krishna, although she knows his actual character. Maybe she is so much captivated by Krishna's sweet words that she cannot understand his real character. But as far as we are concerned, we are more intelligent than the goddess of fortune. We are not going to be cheated anymore by Krishna or his messengers. <laughs> you foolish bumblebee. You are trying to satisfy me and get a reward by singing the glories of Krishna. But it is a useless attempt. We gopis are bereft of all our possessions. We are away from our homes and families. We know very well about Krishna. We know even more than you. So whatever you make up about him will be old stories to us. She's good with words, too. So is Lalita. Krishna is now in the city and is better known as the friend of Arjuna. He now has many new girlfriends who are no doubt very happy in his association. If you go there and glorify Krishna, they may be pleased to reward you. You are just trying to pacify me by your behavior as a flatterer, and therefore you put your head under my feet, but I know your trick you're trying to play. I know that you're the messenger coming from a greater trickster, Krishna. Therefore, please leave me. 
Whoop. I can understand that you're expert in reuniting two opposing parties. But at the same time, you must know that I cannot place my reliance upon you, nor upon your master Krishna. We left our husbands, children, and relatives only for Krishna, yet he did not feel any obligation in exchange. At last, he left us forlorn. Do you think we can place our faith in him again? We know that Krishna cannot live for a moment without the association of young women. That is his nature. He is finding difficulty in Mathura because he is no longer in the village among innocent cowherd girls. He is in aristocratic society and must be feeling difficulty in making friendships with other young girls. Perhaps you have come here to canvas again or to take us there. But why should Krishna expect us to go there? He is greatly qualified to entice all other girls, not only in Vrindavan or Mutra, but all over the universe. How wonderfully enchanting is his smile, so attractive, and the movements of his eyebrows, so beautiful, that he can call for any woman from heavenly, middle, and plutonic planets. Even Mahalakshmi, Maha the greatest of the goddesses of fortune, hankers to render him some service. In comparison to all these women of the universe, who are we? We are very insignificant. Krishna advertises himself as magnanimous, and he is praised by great saints. His qualification to be perfectly utilized if he would only show us some mercy. For we are so downtrodden and neglected by him. You poor messenger, you are only a less intelligent servant. You do not know much about Krishna, how ungrateful and hard-hearted he has been, not only in this life but in previous lives also. But here is the difficulty. In spite of his being so cruel and hard-hearted, it is very difficult for us to give up talking about him. And... It is not only we who are unable to give up this talk, but great sages and saintly persons also engage in talking about him. We gopis of Vrindavan do not want to make any more friendships with this blackish boy, but we do not know how we shall be able to give up remembering and talking about his activities. In my opinion, no one should hear about Krishna, because soon as a drop of the nectar of his transcendental activities is poured into the ear, one immediately rises above the duality of attraction and rejection. Then he wanders in search for Krishna, either as a human being or some other species of life, even as a bird, and voluntarily accepts the profession of a mendicant. It is very difficult to actually understand Krishna, his name, his qualities, his form, his pastimes, his paraphernalia, and his entourage. Please, don't talk any more about Krishna. He's talking to the bumblebee. <laughs> don't talk any more about Krishna. It is better to talk about something else. We are already doomed. Like the black spotted she-deer in the forest who are enchanted by the sweet musical vibration of the hunter. In the same way, we have been enchanted by the sweet words of Krishna and by thinking of the rays of his toenails again and again, we're becoming more and more lusty for his association. Therefore, I request you, O bumblebee, do not talk of Krishna anymore. Now, the bumblebee hasn't said anything. <laughs> She's just in a state of transcendental madness. Here's a nice painting of the bumblebee at Radharani's feet, surrounded by her gopi friends who are charmed by their pran sakhi, Radharani. Here's another BBT painting from the reprint of the Krishna book. In the background, that's Uddhava reading the letter from Krishna. She hasn't heard a word of Krishna's message. It's for her. 
but she's just gone mad in her feelings of love for Krishna, feeling attraction and all of the rest. So, in Vrindavan, we know that there's five primary rasas, and head of those five primary rasas, topmost of those five primary rasas is the Madhurya rasa. And it's described that each and every one of the living entities in Vrindavan have some tinge of that Madhurya rasa, that is to say, they also delight in seeing the meeting of Radha and Krishna because that's Krishna's greatest happiness. And they enjoy facilitating the meeting of Radha and Krishna. Even when there's this seeming position of opposition, Jatil and Katila, for example, it's just to enhance the sweetness of their meeting. And similarly, Radha is very much attached, or Krishna is very much attached to Radha. This is a, a painting to illustrate a story where Radha was in a mood of anger towards Krishna, Man, and an arrangement was made by Vrinda Devi to have Krishna dressed as a gopi, and there he is attending to the feet of Srimati Radharani, very happy. Here's a chart showing her family tree. And you probably know she has a younger sister and an older brother. The younger, younger sister is Ananga Manjari, and the older brother is Sridham. And her father is Vrishabhanu. Now this says that he has, Vrishabhanu has three brothers. I've seen other sources that say he has four brothers or five brothers total. He's the eldest of them. And Vrishabhanu married Kirtida, who's um, from another family line over there on the right side. We often hear in the writings of Rupa Goswami, that's describing pastimes, that see in the bottom right is Mukhara. Mukhara is the grandmother of um, Radharani from the grandmother of Kirtida's her mother, then there's brothers and sisters of Kirtida, and then Kirtida's mother, Mukhara. Although she's very old, she plays a very important role in um, Krishna's pastimes. And the paternal grandmother, Sukhada. She's also mentioned regularly. There's the ancestral home, very celebrated place, Varsana. Um, Varsana is made of four hills. And there's a description that Lord Brahma made a request of Krishna. Uh, I'd like to take part in your pastimes when you appear on earth, because Brahma is this direct son of Garbhadakshay Vishnu, and by the mercy of the personality of God that he came to know the Vedas, and the essence of the Vedas is to know Krishna, so he appealed to Krishna to take part in his pastimes. So Krishna agreed and said, uh, you want to have a very humble position so you can become the four hills where Radharani makes her pastimes. So the Varsana area, it's that's one hill, but the other hills, there's in, in that same vicinity, when you go there, you'll most likely want to climb and go up and up. And the picture, here's a picture of two of them. This one in the front, um, this is um, 
uh, Mor Vilas. Mor is a local word for peacock. And there's a very, um, it's the, the, the photograph is taken from another of the hills called Man Vilas. Man Vilas is the place where Radharani would go when she was angry to get away from Krishna. And Mor Vilas has another um, from down below. The, how many here have been to Varsana? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. I hope you'll get to go one day. There's a, where this is taken from is a, um, a, a little pond. It's a place where a pastime of Madhu Mangal was performed. And there's a set of steps that go up and up and up and up and up and up. And then it, there's a temple at the top, more Vilas. And the temple inside, there's a, a painting of a pastime taking place between Radha and Krishna. And the story goes like this. There was um, some hundred years ago or something like that, there was a, a sadhu who was blind, but he, he heard the pastime of Radha and Krishna performing pastimes in the mood of peacocks. So he went there and per performed his bhajan, appealing that Radha and Krishna would show him that pastime, although he was blind. So he was given darshan of that pastime. And Radha specifically then requested him, please make a painting so others can see this pastime. And so the, mind, the man was blind. And how is he going to paint a painting? And there wasn't a, you know, a readily available art supply store down around the corner at the shopping center, that, like that. But he, she p committed that we, I would make a facility. You just do this service. So Radharani is very merciful. And the pastime is depicted here. This is the painting that you'll find at go up that hill to that temple, and that's it. This is what this blind man painted. Radha and Krishna were seated together. And Radha began to smile. So she didn't have to say what her smile was. Krishna understood. She wanted to see Krishna dance like a peacock. So Krishna assumed the form of a peacock and began dancing and dancing with his feathers spread. And Radha then got up and danced like a peahen and they were dancing together. So that's the pastime that this blind sadhu saw. And of course, there's other paintings like it, more modern and a little more artistic. So that's more Vilas. Here's another painting indicating the same pastime. And as you, um, Generally, the devotees, when they visit um, Varsana, we, we are accustomed, I'm accustomed to starting at the back side. That is to say, not the front side where you go up the, up the, the long, many, many, many steps to the, the, the main temple of Radharani and, Radha, and Vishabhanu and Kirtida, but the back side on the other side. And there's a marketplace down at the bottom of the hill. And so the, 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 what was done is at the time, at the milking time in the evening, uh, the gopis would milk the cows and then bring the milk products to the villages in the area. So there's a place going up that walkway that's known as Sankari Kor. And this is a painting showing that pastime where we mentioned it yesterday, the tax pastime. In many places, because it was one of those pastimes Krishna liked to do, so in many places in Vrindavan. One of the places is on top of Govardhan Hill, a tax pastime. 
but this is another one, by Varsana, and Krishna was demanding tax. You can't pass through here. You have to pay tax. They said, pay tax to you, why? She said, because I'm the son of Nanda Maharaj, and he's the king, and you all have to pay taxes to the king. So pay taxes or won't let you pass. And they said, get out of the way. <laughs> Radharani is the queen of Vrindavan, and you don't tax the queen of Vrindavan. Get out of our way. So Krishna, with his stick, he broke the pot that had dairy products inside. And the Lalita, that's the in, in the peacock-looking colored dress, or sari, She's she's um, really good at scolding Krishna when when she has to. So she let him have it. You're in big trouble now. You don't take this. This belongs to Radharani, and you've broken one of the pots. You're in big trouble. So the next day, um, Krishna, along with the cowherd boys were hiding not just Krishna alone, but many of them along that same trail. Here's the trail. If you've been there, you recognize it. It's very, there's a, a mountain on the left side, and there's a mountain on the right side, and there's this little narrow, very tricky passageway in between the two. And so t pilgrims try to make their way through, but it takes a long time because it's really slippery and it's really steep. So, approaching that particular passageway, the cowherd boys were, were ready to tax the gopis again, but the gopis were there by the hundreds, hiding behind the trees and rocks. And when the cowherd boys came to tax them, they swooped down and grabbed them all and tied their sikas to the trees so they couldn't move. I guess they had long sikas. Very fashionable. And there's a there's further story. So if you if you continue going on the other side, there's a, a village where it was one of where one of the gopis resides. And um, going further up to, to the next vilas, at the very top, there's another temple called the Dan Bihari Temple, and it's comm commemorating another pastime of Krishna. The pastime that Krishna performed here is there was a, a, a Brahmin who had uh, three daughters, and he didn't have the means to take care of their dowry for marriage. So he was in anxiety, and when it, particularly when his daughters became of marriageable age and he was helpless. So he decided he would approach Krishna, because Krishna is the son of Nanda Maharaj, and Nanda Maharaj has some wealth, so maybe Krishna would help him. He's known to be very merciful. So um, when he approached Krishna, he, Krishna said, well, I really don't have much, but there's one thing I do have that I consider to be my greatest of wealth, and that's Radharani, so I'll gift her to you. And the Brahmin was in, now in further anxiety. I already have three daughters, now I have four. What am I going to do? This isn't fair. So Krishna said, I'll tell you what. And at, at, the, at this temple, there's a big archway that is the place, it's said, is the place where a large scale was set up, like a pan scale. So Radharani, who was gifted to the Brahmana, was placed on this side of the scale, and Krishna requested the gopis to all load up the other side of the scale with their bangles and all their ornaments and everything, enough to equal the weight of Radharani. So you take the weight of all those ornaments of the gopis, because as far as I'm concerned, the weight of Radharani is worth more than the weight of all those ornaments. So the Brahmana was very happy, and 
the gopis understood the pastime that Krishna was performing, and they were also very happy. That's this Dan Bihari. So that's the deity at the top of the hill, in a little small temple where uh, this pastime occurred. And down at the bottom, and a little bit further away, is uh, a place called Pili Pokar. Pokar means like a, a pond or a small lake. And uh, you mentioned Radharani's cooking. There's a little story about Radharani becoming so expert at cooking. Are you familiar with that story? Yes? No? No? Would you like to hear? Yeah? Do you know who is Durvasa Muni? Durvasa Muni? Durvasa Muni? Three times. No? He's, um, he's a partial incarnation of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is known to be easily angered and easily pleased. So the name for Lord Shiva is Ashutosh. So Dervasamuni was a, a, a Brahmana, very, very, very powerful Brahmana. And if someone pleased him, he could give many benedictions. If someone angered him, they're in big trouble. So everyone was afraid. Durvasa Muni's got a temper. And when he gets angry, he can, he can destroy anything. He's really powerful. So Durvasa Muni one time came to visit Vrindavan. And everyone said, uh-oh, look out, here comes Durvasa Muni. But the gopis, they didn't think that. They thought, oh, a Brahmin, a sage has come to, Bar to Vrindavan. So they ran to greet him. They're off in a field, a pasturing ground. And Dravasamuni was very pleased with their reception. And he said, you know, I've been traveling and fasting for a long time. So if you want to do some service, you can bring some food. I'm very hungry. And they looked at each other and said, well, our homes are not so far away. We can run back and prepare something and bring it here very quickly. And Dravasamuni said, no, you don't understand. I want something right now. Don't anger Dravasamuni, right? So they looked at Radharani and she shrugged her shoulders and she took some dust from Vrindavan, mixed it with a little water and made some Vrindavan biscuits right in the middle of the pasturing ground. And they handed it to Dravasamuni and said, try one. And he said, what? <laughs> you expect me to eat this? And she said, no, you don't understand. Radharani is really skilled. You just, just, just take a bite. Try one. So he took a bite, and it was really yummy. And then he gave Radharani a benediction. And the benediction was really special. The benediction was that whatever she cooked, it would be exquisitely tasteful. She would never prepare the same thing twice. And anyone who ate her cooking would live a very healthy life and live a long life. So when the girls went back, they told their parents, you know what happened today? <laughs> Nervous Modi, blah, blah. So when Radharani's mother, whose name is? Kirtida, right? Kirtida. So Kirtida and Yashoda, they were very close friends. Just like Vrishabhanu and Nanda, they're very close friends. So Kirtida said to Yashoda, you know what happened today? Radharani got this benediction from Dravasa Muni. And when Mother Yasoda heard that, she said, oh, can you make an arrangement so that every morning 
Radha can come with some of her friends and prepare the morning meal for Krishna? Sure. So from a little girl, and then throughout, she that was her service. That's how it started. And um, you know how things go. In course of time, Mother Dasoda became very affectionate, naturally affectionate, towards Radharani, and Radharani towards Mother Dasoda. They developed a very transcendentally wonderful relationship, and her mind as a mother started thinking, wouldn't it be nice if my son and Radha became married? She didn't say anything, but you know. And as the days passed, she was thinking more like that. So in a joking manner, joking manner, very playful manner, she decorated Radharani's hands with haldi, like marriage or pre-marriage uh, arrangement, and laughing, 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 and Radha was laughing, and it was all fun. But as Radharani was walking home, she was looking at her hands and her thinking, what's my mother going to say? I can tell her it was just fun and play, but it would be very uncomfortable. So she decided she would wash off the turmeric in a pukor. And the yellow color remained in the pukor, so it became known as pili pukor. But someone saw her doing this. And so they, they went back to Vrishabhanu and Kirtita and told them, you know what? <laughs> Mother Yasoda and your daughter and... So they, they were really happy. They were thinking the same way. Wouldn't it be nice if... And so they decided that they would send a cartload of valuable jewels uh, with the, the, the essence of the message being, we accept this marriage proposal. Now they're little, but in, in Vedic culture, young boys, young girls were married. They didn't live together, but they were officially married so that when they became grown up, they would, they would know all the while, this is my husband, this is my wife, and it was made easy. So Mother Jasoda and Nanda, they were in anxiety. We don't have the wealth that Vrishabhanu and Kirtida have. What are we going to do? And Nanda, being very wise, said, well, we can't do anything without asking Purnamasi. So they asked Purnamasi. She said, no way. This, can't, this marriage can't. To, this isn't the right time. It's not an auspicious time. Forget it. So with that, it was past. But the, the, it's a celebrated place. There's another photo. I didn't put it up here. But it's, um, it's a very nice place. The area around Versailles is not commercial. I mean, some, there are many places in Vrindavan. It's like awful. But it, this is very simple. Simple village. Just like it's been for who knows, centuries. So past times of... Radha and Krishna's coming together, their eternal pastimes manifest in this world in this way. Very nice pastimes. There's um, a pastime also described in Second Canto, Chapter 7. Second Canto, Chapter 7 is one of the places where the list of the forms of the Lord is the, the, the avatars are described. So when describing um, this particular pastime, this is Narnarayan Rishi, and in the front, holding that bow, that's Cupid, or Kandarpa, and um, from the heavenly planets, Cupid is there under the order of keeping everybody engaged in you know, attraction, male-female attraction, and he's really good at it. So uh, Indra became concerned, as he does sometimes, that this Nara Narayan, they're engaged in such severe austerities, they may have some, some intention of taking over the heavenly kingdom. 
by their the power of austerity. So he sent Cupid with the mo most delightful heavenly damsels to try to allure Nara Narayan. So in, in the back, that's Nara, that's Arjuna, and in the front is Narayana, and so Kandarpa was getting ready to attract Cupid, excuse me, Cupid was getting ready to attract Narayan to these heavenly damsels, and what Narayan did was he manifested unlimited goddesses of fortune, as you see that's floating in the air up there, that's the goddesses of fortune, far, far more beautiful than any of the damsels of the heavenly region. And um, the demigods were praising the personality of Godhead for his great power. So he, Madan, became attracted by Madan Mohan, the attractor of Cupid. So that's one of the names of Krishna is Madan Mohan the attractor of Cupid, referring to this pastime of Naranarayan. And in the Govinda Lilamrita, there's this nice description where Radha has a parrot and Krishna has a parrot. Vrindadevi has thousands of parrots. As you visit, um, when you visit Vrindavan and you spend time with Dina Bandhu, he'll tell you all about it. Vrinda Devi controls Krishna's daily pastimes through her parrot brigade. Tens of thousands go in different directions every morning to make the plan and tell everybody what the plan is for the day and get spy information, who's doing what, and bring it back and so forth. So in, in the Govindali Lamrita, Krishna's parrot is saying, my dear Shadi, Sri Krishna carries a flute and enchants the hearts of all women through the universe. He is specifically the enjoyer of the beautiful gopis and he is the enchanter of Cupid also, Madan Mohan. Let him be glorified. So Radharani's parrot hears Krishna's parrot speaking. And Radharani's parrot says, Srimati Radharani, affection, her exquisite beauty and good behavior, her artistic dancing and chanting and her poetic compositions are all so attractive that they attract the mind of Krishna who attracts the mind of everyone in the universe. So that's Radharani's name, Madan Mohan Mohini, the attractor of the attractor of Cupid. We saw this painting the other day, it's a celebrated painting. This is in, in Man Vilas, or Man Gar, it's also sometimes used, that the a place where Radharani would go in her mood of anger towards Krishna. It's a very beautiful painting of Radharani using her left hand saying Krishna, don't touch me. Like she was saying to the bumblebee, only she's saying now directly to Krishna. But she's holding up her veil in such a way she can, out of the corner of her eye, she can see Krishna and will see her gentle smile. Krishna is crying and he wants to pacify Radha's anger, but she's not submitting. Very stubborn. And Radharani is also crying but smiling at the same time. And you look in the background and you can see the faces of the gopis. They're observing this wonderful pastime of Krishna. Very beautiful painting. So continuing, when Lord Krishna is with Radharani, he is the enchanter of Cupid. Otherwise, when he is alone, he himself is enchanted by Cupid, even though he enchants the whole universe. Again, this Man Lila with the gopis looking on and Radharani. 
she's not just playing hard to get or coyish like that. She's her her love for Krishna is unstoppable. But it's part of what pleases Krishna to use his cleverness to break the anger of Radha. Another place very near to Varsana is a um, place where this wonderful pastime, Prem Sarovar, took place. So the description goes like this, these little extensions going out into the lake. Um, Radha and Krishna were seated together. Some Many gopas and gopis were with them. Madhu Mangal was with them. And as they were sitting and, and laughing and enjoying together, uh, Radharani had a beautiful garland and there was a bee buzzing around the garland. So Radharani was a little distracted by the, the bee buzzing around her garland. So Krishna said to Madhu Mangal, Madhu Mangal, please remove this bee because he knows mantras and he knows how to do things. So Madhu Mangal did what, whatever he needed to do and he then said, Madhu is gone. Madhu meaning bee, because Madhu means sweet and bees go for honey, so sometimes bees are referred to as Madhu. Madhu is gone. And hearing that Madhu is gone phrase, Radharani was thinking, Krishna, Madhu Sudhana is gone. And thinking Madhusudana is gone, she began crying intensely, uncontrollably, profuse tears. And Krishna saw this right in front of him and said, Radharani, I'm right here. I haven't gone anywhere. But she, her mood was so far gone, she couldn't control herself. And crying and crying and crying and so moved by her mood of love, that Krishna began crying to see the mood of love of Radha. And their tears, it is said, the tears filled the lake. And from that time it was called Prem Sarovar. A very special pastime as we find between Radha and Krishna. Here is Radha sneaking from Krishna's hand his favorite flute. And sometimes it is said that Krishna learned how to play flute from Radha. She was his instructor. And sometimes Radha likes to play the flute and enchant Krishna. And sometimes when Krishna is gone, Radha will imitate the threefold bending position of Krishna, put a peacock feather in her hair, and make the sounds with the flute like Krishna makes, and all the animals and birds and creatures of Vrindavan like Krishna's flute song, uh, become charmed and enchanted. By her side on our left, but Radha's right, that's Lalita, we know it's Lalita because how she's dressed, and to our right or Radha's left, that's Vishaka. We know it's Vishaka similarly because of how she's dressed. And you get this little um, uh, description and you can read about how they appear and so forth. Um, I'm very clear in my memory about Bhakti Chaitanya Swami having commissioned somebody to make drawings of each of the gopis and how they're dressed. Very simple, but you know, very attractive. And I know he's really busy, but I, you know, someday when he sends that to me, I'll add it to that PDF so we have images of each of the eight principal gopis. It's a, it's a, it's a lovely part of our discussion about <coughs> Srimati Radharani. Now I'm looking at my my watch, and it's 25 minutes after the hour. I've got a lot more coming attractions here, but I think I'm going to have to wrap it up. 
Maybe we'll save some of it for tomorrow. This is a, a painting of Krishna playing the flute by the side of the Govardhan Hill. In the background, there's cows. And on the flat rocks of Govardhan Hill, Radha is enjoying Krishna's company. One of her skills is artwork. She's very artistic, but there's one topic that she's interested in, in making drawings of. Krishna. And when she's being attended by uh, her dear friends, fanning her, singing nice music, decorating her this way, that way, she only has one interest, Krishna. See in the background up on the hill, that's the Varsana temple. Very nice painting. I think the last story I'll, I'll tell, I'll narrate is um, the Janji festival. When we go to Vrindavan, one of the places that we for sure go to visit is Govardhan Hill. And common for the, the pilgrims to visit Govardhan Hill, do Parikrama around Govardhan Hill, is to start at, what's the name of this place? Kusum Sarovar. Kusum Sarovar. The name was given because there are certain flowers that would grow in that area. And there are lots of trees that um, was celebrated for having many, many, many flowering, fragrant, beautiful flowers. And the gopis would regularly go there to gather flowers. So once a year... And this is, by the way, this is the rainy season because water is really high, huh? And everything is very green. <clears throat> so what happens on, on this Janji festival in Varsana, it's been a tradition f even before Radha and Krishna's time. One day of the year, there's a festival where the girls are encouraged to go gather flowers and decorate the doorways of their homes. And in the evening, the village elders would come by and see the decorations and then award the first prize to whoever decorated their house most nicely. The nice festival. So on the day of the Janji festival, the girls were up really early going to their favorite place, Kusum Sarovar, to gather the, the flowers because it was a really good place to gather flowers. And Krishna knew. So what did Krishna do? Krishna was didn't get out of bed. When it was time to get up and herd the cows, he was just moaning, oh, oh. So Mother Jasoda decided, we'll just, he'll stay home. Balaram, you take the, the cowherd boys out today, and Krishna's going to stay home. So as soon as the elders left, Krishna got dressed and went straight for Kusum's rover because he had a plan, a clever pastime with the gopis. So when the gopis were gathering flowers, Krishna had a costume. He had a gardener costume. And um, Vanamali, he called himself. Vana Mali, a gardener. So when Radharani was going to pick flowers, she had a basket <clears throat> and placing the flowers in the basket, but what, her sari got stuck on a thorn bush. And as she was trying to release her sari from the thorn bush, another part of her sari got stuck on another thorn bush. So even then there were thorn bushes. Some people say it was just a British brought them in. They were thorn bushes. So um, Vanamali came and released Radharani from the, the thorn bushes. And Radharani was very pleased. He said, who are you? How did you know I was in difficulty? I was calling out for the gopis, but they were some distance away. They didn't come. He said, I'm the, the gardener of the king. 
My name is Vanamali, and I just happened to be passing by, saw you're in difficulty, so I released you. And so I have to go, I have many duties to do. And he left. And Radharani, not knowing that it was Krishna, because he wanted her to not know it was Krishna, he, um, she met up with her gopi friends, and they looked at her and said, what happened? You're usually, your basket is so filled with flowers, all of our baskets together doesn't equal yours, but there's hardly anything in your basket. What happened? And she described what happened and said, since that, I haven't been able to pick any flowers. My mind is so absorbed in that gardener. I don't know who he was. I don't know what the effect was he had upon me. And then Krishna showed up again and said, What are you doing? <clears throat> <clears throat> I've heard that there's thieves that come and steal flowers for the king in the king's garden. So now I know who's guilty. It's all of you. You can't do this. And he took his stick, his gardener's stick, and hit the bottom of the basket. And the flowers went flying in all directions. And so they were really angry. This is for Janji festival. Now you've spoiled everything. So they grabbed him. And when they grabbed him, they felt something in his back. And Krishna had his flute stuck in the back. And they said, wait a minute, you're not Vanamali, you're Van Bihari. <laughs> now what are you going to do? Because oh, there's all these flowers on the ground. He said, don't worry. I'll take all the flowers to the river Jamuna and bathe and, and wash them and you'll have nice flowers. And they said, that's all right, you can do that. But you've offended Radharani. Now what are you going to do to make up for your offense to Radharani? So this pastime, this Janji festival pastime, is depicted here on the ceiling of one of the those arch uh, mandap areas. It's showing Krishna, who's got a mustache and a peacock feather, dressing the hair of Radharani. So he's taking, you know, fragrant oil and placing flowers in Radharani's hair and decorating her very nicely. And after decorating her hair very nicely, he wants to give other ornaments. Let's see what Radharani's interested in. In, in the mirror, we see what she's looking at. And um, he takes some jewels and places marks on her body and rings on her fingers and he's just like deity dressing <laughs> this is that same pastime very beautiful painting of krishna very beautiful painting of radharani and the gopis then enjoy the pastime of placing Radharani on a swing with Krishna. So the end of the story goes, um, well, it's, it's, now it's really late. We're, we're, we have to get back. So Krishna said, don't worry. I'm the best decorator. I'll do it on, on behalf of Radharani and decorated the home of Radharani and she won the first prize. That's how the, the long, longer story, but that's the version of the story. And swing pastimes are very celebrated with Radha and Krishna. Many, many, many places where they engaged in swing festival. There's a place by the side of um, Radhakund that is, was, there was a very special tree. It, it died, but it's said that that tree was the same tree that Radha and Krishna would swing on during the swing festival time. We know our Julun Yatra we have in Iskhan. So the tree died. I was there when the tree was still there and then I was, you know, saw that what happened to that tree. So they built a cement archway and now all the deities in the nearby temples on Julun Yatra day, they bring them out, they place them on the swing 
and they gently swing them back and forth. It's a, a celebrated Krishna and Radha enjoying together pastime. And there's many nice painting, paintings of Radha feeding Krishna, her, her excellent cooking. Krishna making offerings to Radharani as well, of Pan. We have some very talented artists, yeah, in this con. So, there's more, but time has gone by. So Radharani is offering to Krishna, Krishna is offering to Radharani. That's their loving exchange. One of them, and sometimes it's anger. That's also a loving exchange. Let's see if there's some discussion. I mean, I don't know what there. What you discuss about Radha Krishna pastimes, but you can discuss. We can discuss together the topics of Krishna. Online question. Okay. <clears throat> Marad, please kindly tell how to maintain a prayerful mood. Pray a lot. You become good at anything you practice. How do you become good at violin? You play musical instrument in school? No. If you, if, if, when you get a music teacher, they'll teach you rudiments and fundamentals, but they'll also say you have to practice every day. Or, you know, some of you that cook, probably when you first started cooking, it d didn't taste so good. <laughs> but you practice, and you practice and practice. And so to maintain... Anything, you invest consciousness in that something, and you'll get reciprocation. To maintain a prayerful mood, it's very helpful also to associate with our great acharyas who are always have a prayerful mood. Associate with those persons who pray in their, in their own way, of course. their standard ways, but pray in their own way as well. And you'll get a sense of what a prayerful mood looks like. And then you continue to associate with them, and you you have you evolve your own mood and style and words of prayer practice. That's it. Yeah, one more question. Okay. Why was Radharani born in a lotus flower? I couldn't hear. Why was Radharani born in a lotus flower? Why was she born in a lotus flower? Well, it's not always... There's different pastimes of Radharani's appearance, and it's not always on a lotus flower. Sometimes she appears in different ways. But when she appears from a lotus flower, that's just... Krishna's arrangement. I mean, it, it, it's quite unique, isn't it? Being born on a lotus flower. It's really unique, I must, must say. But so it, it's a divine arrangement that producing something that's a lotus is considered to be very a, a symbol of an emblem of peace and beauty and tranquility, harmony. And that's a nice place for Radharani to be born. It's, it seems to me to be like a gesture, of like kind of like a poetic gesture for her, her to make some appearance. But sometimes it's in other ways. Okay. Krishna Maharaj. Uh, uh, we have heard a lot of, lot of pastimes uh, 
uh, of Radharani. Can you elaborate something on where Radharani is referred as Kishori? Elaborate on what? Radharani is referred as Kishori. The past time is there a past time for well, because that because her her age is in the Kishore period, and the feminine of Kishore is Kishori. There is no other past time on that. That's, a, that's her life is a past time. <laughs> She's eternally Kishori. Question from Visalaksha Prabhu. What are the lessons um, can be learned from these sweet pastimes? Radharani is, uh, just as at the very beginning, maybe the persons online couldn't hear because we didn't pass the microphone. They were at the very beginning, they asked everybody in the room to say, when they think of Radharani, what do you think of? What's very prominent? So, very merciful, very loving. Uh, a few said motherly, like af affection, kind of. So, she's, she's, a, she's what a lesson from these pastimes is, she's very kind. And by her mercy, we get access to Krishna's mercy. So the lessons, make yourself dear to Radharani. You're in good shape. You become dear to Krishna. And then the question, okay, how do we make ourselves dear to Radharani? <laughs> well, you make yourself dear to Radharani by making yourself dear to Lord Chaitanya. Then you become dear to Radharani. Then you become dear to Krishna. So how do you become dear to Lord Chaitanya? You assist Lord Nityananda in fulfilling the desire of Lord Chaitanya. What's that? You invite people to chant Krishna's holy name and to take the process of bhakti, take up devotional service. That's, that was Lord Nityananda's service. You assist Lord Nityananda, you've gotten the favor of Lord Chaitanya. You get the favor of Lord Chaitanya, you get the favor of Radharani. You get the favor of Radharani, you get the favor of Krishna. You're home. So we're remote, but it starts right where we are. And serve the Vaishnavas in a way that's um, pleasing to the Vaishnavas and pleasing to our disciplic succession. Okay, anyone else? Or we're... Uh, what did... Huh? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Like Radharani is so merciful. So uh, any particular pastime showing that she is so merciful to her devotees. To her devotees? Yes. Well, <coughs> yeah. There's, there's um, a particular pastime that comes to mind when you ask that question is She defers the, uh, the attraction of love that Krishna has for her to her dear associates. When there's an arrangement being made for Radha and Krishna to get on a swing, she's very enthusiastic to have her gopi friends get on the swing with Krishna. There's no envy. You know, she's like, the chosen one. And she's deferring, because it's her pleasure, she's deferring, get on the swing with, and they, they're saying, no, 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 it's for you. And she's insisting. So she has that control over them by her personality and her nature. And so she gets them on the swing and she's helping them to push the swing. That's her own dear friends. No, it's not always like that because Krishna's pleasure is to be with Radha. But Radha's pleasure is to uh, encourage her gopi friends as well. There's many. It's, it's all variegated. It's not only one thing. and It's all very variegated. But that's an example, a nice example. Okay. 
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, my first one is a statement actually. Um, on this um, Radha's to me, it was so nice to hear the lecture and the pictures which you are showing, it's like we want to keep on seeing Maharaj. It was like that and it has taken There's to the more. place. Yeah. <laughs> It has taken to the place where it happened. That's how it was, all this uh, mm. one hour, Maharaj. Thank you so much. And even more is go there, go to Vrindavan, go, go Vrindavan. Hare Krishna. Sure, Maharaj. Okay. Maharaj, one more uh, question, Maharaj. It is on the practical application, right? Um, so when when we are with um, with our devotees, um, Bhakti Vriksha members, when they are showing a lot of affection, love, and they are doing so much help, right, uh, to to us. How to reciprocate that or how to receive that? Even I am sometimes afraid, like, how to accept that, actually, even if it's like help. Well, one of, the, one, of the, one of the tricks or secrets of devotional service is it's not for you. Be transparent. So if something comes to you, it's not for me. Something comes to me, it's not for me. Something comes to you, it's not for you. It's um, a service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Siphic Succession, so it just goes right through you to them. Don't say no, no, no. Or, you know, if it, it, it's counter to humility to say yes, yes, yes. So you don't, it's not, you don't say no, you don't say yes. It's just you be a transparent place where a Vaishnava can offer service to another Vaishnava and it goes up the, the line of disciplic succession. If there's something, you know, let's say it this way. There's many ways to say it. One way to say it is Bhakti Vinod Thakur, you won't find any good quality in me. But if you find any good quality in me, it's because my spiritual master put it there. I give the credit to my spiritual master. So if you see something good in me, it's because my spiritual master put it there. But you're not receiving, it's just being transmitted up the line of disciplic succession. The descending mercy of Krishna through disciplic succession has come into my life. Somehow I've contacted that by good fortune. And so by that good fortune, I'm now in the, in the giving and receiving end of the disciplic succession. But it's not me. I'm just bestowing the disciplic succession's kindness and mercy and affection and teachings and everything. And then something comes and it goes back up the line. I'm just an instrument of the disciplic succession. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It, 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 yeah. We're not impersonalists and we're not materialists. So it's, it's another position. It, it, so it requires a spiritual conception of who we are. And that takes a while because we've got a material one. Including a material conception of humility. It's not, a, anyway. I forwarded your document to that Mataji, Dargi Mataji, uh, regarding the Ashtasakis. She had a question on Lalita Devi. Um, uh, Radharani is so sweet, so um, her understanding was the Sakis are also uh, so sweet, but Lalita is mentioned as hot tempered. Um, no, Radha, Radha would be like that too. <laughs> Tell him to get out of here. <laughs> Don't come near me. So the question was like how to understand that? It, it it's, it's variety. In the case of Lalita, she's, she's protecting Krishna. Excuse me, she's protecting Radha. So anything that disturbs Radha, and she's, you know, she's really good at you know, saying it straight and, you know, intense. So there and there's degrees. There's Sanskrit terms for the degrees. There's intense like her. There's moderate, and there's very light. And then there's ones that go the other way. 
they're very apologetic and they're very peacemaking and and she's over, way over there. Don't be, don't make any offense to Radha, but you're going to have to answer to me. It's it's a, it's a mood of, but it's it's not against Krishna. Krishna likes. She makes so many other kinds of arrangements for their meeting. She is a very special personality, and she's, yeah. Yeah, so that's how we understand it. It's not, you know, by material vision it doesn't seem right. By spiritual vision it makes a lot of sense. It's out, and she only does out of love. She doesn't have anger, material mood kind of thing going on. Okay? One last question. Um, why should, um, we, we hear different names of Radha and Krishna like Radha Damodar, Radha Govinda, Radha Madan Mohan. But Radha stays same as Radha. Uh, is there a reason? That's a nice name. In, in um, Bhakti Siddhanta's headquarters, the Radha Krishna deities are Gandharvaka. Giri Dari. But generally, he's, you know, whoever says this is right. It's generally Radha. It's a very special name. Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhupada Ki Dai.